people. Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And this is a review of The Crazies. Uh, Goddamn Crazies. This is a Patreon review. In our Patreon tier, we have a tier where uh, once a week we select one of our excellente El Patreon. And you get to pick the, the, the video that we do that week. And this week's winner is Kevin Fishgall. I think it's Gall or Gal, Fish Gal, Fish Gall. Either way, he's an awesome fucking person. I like him a whole lot. And you better take him shopping for his birthday. You better do it and get him whatever he wants. A Lego set? Okay. Maker! You didn't clean up your Lego toys? God damn it, I stepped on one! I might have deadness! Kevin Fishgall sounds like one of those extra DLC fighters in Mortal Kombat. I'm gonna be Fishgall, y'all. <laughs> so, The Craze is actually a remake of a George Romero film, and in my opinion, it's gonna be an unpopular opinion. Well, I don't know, I think a lot of people agree with me. I think, I it's think people... better than the original. And, well, I've never seen the original, so I have nothing to compare it to. However, I love Tim the, Tim the Oliphant, so the first thing, that is always gonna be gone. He just looks like that cool guy in high school that you're always gonna be friends with because he knows how to cheat on a test and he can bang the teacher if he wants to. <laughs> and it's awesome. For me, watching it overall, it's a decent flick, but the thing is... Or get your head out of the trash can. Stop! <laughs> He's like, what? Come uh, on now. Do that foul, foul. Uh, the thing about it is, uh, watching the entirety of the film, it, it does feel like the Diet Coke version of 28 Days Later. Here's the thing about Diet Cock. Diet Cock. Not Coke. Diet Coke. Mike! Mike! You're not supposed to be in here! But then it just, I, like 28 days later, it's so fucking great. I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't fall on the same realm as, as that movie. It's like days 28. By the way, him walking on the field with the shotgun, isn't that just all soccer moms when the flag isn't thrown the correct way? <laughs> Dude, if that happened today, <laughs> yeah. in today's world, then it could. everybody, because everybody in the stands are just standing there watching like, oh fuck, what's gonna happen, Tim? In today's world, with all the shootings and stuff, it would have been crazy. Well, in today's that world, everybody in the fucking stands, even the five-year-olds, would pull out their guns. No, we would have been fucking gone. <laughs> like, it oh, would have been true. like Batman smoke. It would have been, been like that beam me up, Scotty. We would all just vanish up through a beam of smoke. Yeah, but that's how it starts, and it's really cool because what happens in the, they find this plane crashes, and it's a badass scene because they're sitting on this little tiny shitty boat him and his deputy Tim the elephant I don't know how he knew it, but he's like we're on top of an airplane <laughs> this saw camera it. fucking pans up and you see this huge fucking airplane in this like uh, lake or whatever it was it was a lake wasn't it yeah I don't know um, in, in this lake underneath Something. him and so then they go back and they try to look at like the town's water supply and they realize that the the first place the water supply goes was the dude who had walked out on the baseball field so then slowly but surely people start going crazy and they start killing their own families and shit like that this, they, get, they don't turn into zombies, but you can see it under their skin, their veins and shit, their eyes go crazy, and they start killing each other They drink too like much that. monster. Yeah. Like, and, that's all that happened. And so you've got that to get through, and then him and his wife, who's the town doctor, uh, is a different play of characters than it was in the original, which I like this way of it a lot better. But uh, it's him and his wife's the doctor and his deputy, and they're trying to survive and navigate all the shit that's going on. But the second layer of shit comes in. These fucking army people start showing up and just, at first they're hurting people. They're putting them all in like a concentration camp type setting and he gets separated from his wife. Uh, but then they start actually you killing You know why? Them. You gotta keep them separated. <laughs> hey, hey, you yeah. can't fucking do them! They're under 18, you won't be doing any time. You know, when I say 28 days later, mixed with some other kind of apocalyptic films where they round up the survivors and they quarantine the area, they've done those a hundred million times. Mm -hmm. and. and Nonetheless, though, they have a strong cast and it's acted well. I just, there were certain things about it that I just didn't, I don't know, like, I, I, sometimes I got bored or something, or, or it felt like maybe there wasn't enough money put into certain production and designs, or maybe the story should have gone a different way. Either way, I still enjoyed the shit out of it. I, I like Timothy Oliphant. Like, again, I'm going to give it a higher rating than I probably should because Timothy Oliphant's it. He automatically gets a point. He's a fucking five. badass. I know. He, he's able to capture that small town feel, but he's also got a badassery about him, a quiet badassery that yeah. I can't explain. It just, it's cool. I want to be his best friend and his lover if he wants. He just seems like a good dude. Like, yeah, he does. He just seems like a really nice guy. And by the way, uh, but he also, he's got that scary thing to him, too. Like, you never know if that motherfucker's gonna flip out, like, in The Girl Next Door. Yeah. Like, he beats, you know, you gotta know when the juice is worth the squeeze. And, like, I, but I, I was gonna say, like, he's cool in the movie. There's one scene, though, that I just thought was really, I don't know if it was acted poorly or if he didn't know it was coming, but when, um, there's a certain moment that happens and, he, and he's confronted by the, uh, the, the person's wife. And uh, she slaps him in the face, and his eyes I never leave <laughs> her eyes. It's like she hit him so hard he went to error 404 on a computer. <laughs>
I love that. I, and Santa Clarita Diet's out right now, season three. I even liked him as Hitman. A lot of people fucking hate that movie, but I liked him as Hitman. There's actually the scene in the, where he fights under the truck and the oil thing. It's just like the scene where he fights as Hitman, and that's exactly uh, what I thought of too. But yeah, no. But Hitman sucks, dude, because his best quality is his hair. I know. <laughs> and they take it away from him. I know, but he's but so cool though. Seriously, guys, if you've not watched Santa Clarita Diet, you've got to get on. Have it's you good. watched it? Yeah, yet? I've watched the first. Couple. Fucking love it, man. I can't wait to finish this season. But anyways, dude, I like it a lot. I think the first time I watched it, I didn't like it that much because, like I said, I think it was a victim of the time because back then more zombie films were coming out like Dawn of the Dead all that shit like that there was a lot of shit like that going on I just all I can say is that I remember sitting in the theater expecting one of those films I expected to be scared and I was kind of I think when you realize you didn't get that I don't know if it was the marketing or whatever I can't remember because they gave away the pitchfork scene which is one of the best scenes of the that's film, a really badass scene in the marketing but I think the reason I love this so fucking much watching it this time man I had a blast with it I, I, I watched it and I thought why the fuck didn't I like this I think it was a victim of the time because uh, I watch it now and what I see it as it's a it's a different play on the zombie thing which is fine every time they do a zombie film of any sort it's always got to have yeah but this time they're wearing hockey pants well thank god <laughs> They always they Thank put God. one tiny thing uh, in a zombie movie on its head, and it's supposed to be a completely different movie. But we all still know the tropes and shit of a zombie movie. But what I love about this movie is if you watch it as an action film, um, as a survival you, uh, action film, it's so much fucking better. You see more bodies. pitchfork scene was the best scene of the movie like it, it definitely was the best scene it was the most harrowing most atmospheric moment and it was scary as fuck like it actually was scary especially yeah. the fact that they focused on the sound of him dragging the pitchfork along the floor and you know that you're strapped there and you can't do a goddamn thing you don't know the safe word it's flock 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 you can't you can't walk a flock, uh, flock. <laughs> uh, but that was a scary and it, actually that scene reminded me of a of a really well put together silent hill scene yeah. Like, if it was Silent Hill, it kind of reminded me of that. And especially, it was just fucking nerve-wracking in some ways. Because some of them were, like, you know, muttering and mumbling, and he still stabs them. One of them's laughing, and then, I don't know, it's just, it's a fucking badass, weird, cool scene, nonetheless. But it was cool, because they're strapped, you're strapped to a fucking table, and you're watching this fucking guy go around and stab people right in the that's chest. When they, the that's when your doctor wants to make sure you're covered. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're going to stay right here until I find out if you've got insurance, bitch. It, it's just, it's it's cool, though, because that, that, that is a really fucking tense scene, but I, I thought there were several tense scenes. Like, there's nothing that's really well, scary. I was like, where do you get that bitch for? Where'd you get that bitch for? <laughs> or, or you really kill all the more of those animals, boy? Where you going with that shotgun? Take that damn mask off. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, dude, I just absolutely love it this time because I watched it and I saw it as an action movie and I love the scene where he goes up to the mayor and he's like we, seriously I think there's something in the water I like, I like the mayor's little titties <laughs> <laughs> they're like a little, little oh, I turn it off the goddamn water Jim they, they look like they look like a uh, half like frozen a half melted gelatin <laughs> <laughs> why is the asshole rich guy always swimming in the pool and, and liver man he's like come on in you know what's fine they're always swimming in the pool they're also super pale white and they're fat <laughs> that's because they're living the life there's a badass scene at the end in the gas station, and then what they do with the people, like how how fucking mean the government ends up being, and mm -hmm. the way they want to eradicate these people, is pretty fucking gnarly in my opinion. I, I like the, the the whole place that that story went, and then when the movie actually ends, you mean the government's not got our best interests at heart? <laughs> what? That's bullshit. Bob Dole. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. I have the best zombies. <laughs> They put them in really good settings. Like there's a scene where they're in the barn and they have to fight off the uh, the, uh, the 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 army people. There's another scene that's in a car wash. <laughs> they're fucking stuck in a moving car wash. That is his friend who's slowly getting the disease or whatever, and you can tell because he's starting to get really pissed at people, which yeah. is basically just my wife when she's hungry. Ah. <laughs> and he starts shooting out the window. He's like, I saw a movement. He's like, everything's fucking moving. Like Timothy Olivet was when he had to be. Like I liked it when he got pissed at his wife in the car wash too. She's like, well we can't go on the main road. There's helicopters. He's like, tell me which road to fucking take. And I'll take it. Where's this magic fucking road? And by the way, I gotta wash my car. <laughs> he was like, I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. the thing about Timothy Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant in any movie will always eventually be the leader. <laughs> like, he just got the attitude and the voice to do it. You give me a fucking medal. Finally get this down drunk. Hmm. 
And then in the end, they had the balls to go with the actual nuking of the city, which they try to drive away in a truck. And I don't know, Harrison Ford survived a nuclear blast at a fucking fridge. Anybody so can do it. I'll believe it, but he's he's in the fucking truck and they're racing away. And it's it, to me, it was a super badass scene because you can hear them on the radio being like, okay, bombs dropping, here comes. I like what she was Here like, comes. well, why the fuck would she even ask, like, what happens when it gets to zero? Oh, I don't fucking know. I guess balloons go off. <laughs> it's Easter. God damn. Obviously a bad bomb. Fucking Taylor comes out. <laughs> Starts fucking shooting confetti. Oh, my there. God. You dropped the bomb on me. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I like but, that in the very, very ending, though, I was like, all right. It was so, it was unnecessarily mean because yeah, you let them survive. No, I mean, no, I mean, yeah. And then, yeah. Like, I was just like, they gonna die anyway. Yeah, like, I was like, why would you do that? Like, you know, just let it end and then it ends. Yeah. Unless you unless you planned on making sequels, which they never did. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know what, I think maybe they were thinking, they were like, hey, you know what, maybe we could make a TV series of this. The Strain. <laughs> never been done. <laughs> the Strain. <laughs> When they're walking in the cornfield and they're wearing the gas station shit, you know, and they're walking away, I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. I actually didn't expect them to fucking make it. Like they're they're walking like away. A video game. And you know they're tired as fuck, and yeah. that they're going towards the city, and you're like, that's awesome. But then they did this cheap, like when the credits came up, they had the news guy on there, and they were like basically saying everyone's fucked, and it, it just felt cheap for the movie. Like you managed to really like the characters, you made them survive, and then just to be fucked up, I don't know, it wasn't cool. Yeah, I then the, the ending. You could have ended it way earlier, and then it would have been fine. Like I would have, I would have been very fucking uh, a pot, an asshole about. It. I would have had the town nuke. You see the car roll over, and then maybe hear a breath, and then the movie ends. Like, were they alive? <laughs> Like, <laughs> like somebody just snapped a diet coat. Like, <laughs> oh, I fucking hated that man. I, I liked it that they were walking in the field or whatever. And I love, I love that 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 nuclear ending. And I love them surviving the gas station, man. I don't know, man. I just had a great fucking time watching this movie. I'm gonna give it a high fucking. I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Ooh, Fuck me in the ass. Damn. Whatever. You're gonna get a big one, a big black cock right in your butt. Whatever. It would have to be big or black, but you know Mike and his demands. I'm not saying it's a <laughs> nine out of ten movie. It's probably in, like, as far as the whole scope of movies go, like as just rating it, it's probably more of an eight in my opinion, but for me, I just, I don't know, I, I found, a, <clears throat> found a place in my fart. I like to, uh, I'm going to give it a 7.0. I enjoyed it as much as the next guy, but <clears throat> I, I've owned, I, I own the movie, like, and I remember watching it, and I watched it when I bought it, and then I had watched it before that, and um, I don't know, my opinion changed a little bit more, because I became more and more acquainted with Timothy Oliphant over his films. And then I was watching it back, and I was like, God, he's really fucking good, and he's really owning this role. And I think that Timothy Oliphant, and no matter what he does, he always puts every effort he can into that character to bring it off the page. And I think he does that phenomenally in this movie as well. And I did like the hometown feel, and I liked them knowing everybody, and I liked this really outside disaster occurring, and then how people react in these disasters. And I think that's really what they were going for. George Romero has always been about social commentary, it's like if a disaster happens around people, it's not about the monsters at the door. It's about how you react and the people react around or towards that. Like, do you turn on each other? Do you, like, unite together? You know, that's really the <clears throat> what I took away from it. And so for that, it was really cool. But, again, I just really feel like 28 Days Later told the story better. Um, other movies that have tried this kind of scenario have done it better. But still, it was a good movie, and I think that we said it, it just came out in maybe the wrong time. Uh -huh. Like, if it had come out in a different time, maybe, and maybe, and another thing, like, maybe if they had fleshed out some more scenes or taken some scenes out, I would have been more into it, because certain scenes I felt like just dragged it for some reason. I just was like, I, I, the whole thing with his best friend, like, slowly turning, and can I walk with y'all for a little while? I mean, it's like, you could take that fucking part that out. That part, I do agree, could have been taken. And then there was other scenes that could have been expanded more. Like, I, I wanted more of the horror element and the atmospheric element, because it almost felt like the movie didn't know what it wanted to be at some points. Like, at some points it was like, horror, other points it was action, suspense, thriller, and then, you know, like, just psychological, and then it was, like, something totally different or combined of the two. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it had a hard time finding its identity, you know, as we all do through high school. But either way, <laughs> it was still a solid movie, and, I mean, if you've never seen it, check it out for sure, and it was a great suggestion, by the way. Thank you for, I hadn't seen it in forever. So. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. I'm really glad you brought this one back. I, I'm not sure I ever would have checked it out again if you didn't. And I think I liked it this time so much more because I, w I knew that it wasn't going to be scary. I was not expecting a 28 Days Later movie, and when I watched it this way, to me, it kind of felt more like a Tom Clancy action film sort of yeah. take on zombies, even though, again, they're not fucking zombies, but a disease. Rainbow Six. Fucking Outbreak. Remember Outbreak? With I love that. Often? I love Badass that Badass fucking movie.
movie. It was like, it's like the, it's like the, and the, the first movie was such a B movie. Like they took it and they cleaned it up. I mean, they really cleaned it up and made it like presented it for all audiences. But I think that this was kind of the, the, the B movie version of Outbreak. Like it, I don't know, it had so much action and shit yeah. in it that, yeah, it felt more like a Tom Clancy type action film than it would have been a horror film. And I think that was so disappointing for so many. But actually, reviewers gave this a positive score when it came out. Um, <clears throat> audiences, the not, audience score is negative. The reviews are positive. So, but I, I will say, if you if you watched it once and you didn't like it, then I definitely say check it out. At least in my opinion, I liked it so fucking much more this time around. Clearly. And by the way, you can't go wrong with using Johnny Cash at the beginning. No, oh, that it. fucking like that song. Uh, and, and you know who did we'll it? We'll meet again. Yeah, and you know who did it also? Dawn of the Dead, the remake. Zack Snyder fucking knew. He knew. Again. That uh, came out first, right? So, yeah. So, that was uh, the Dawn of the Dead came out in like 2001. Or maybe it, it was 03 or 01. Dawn of the Dead. 2004. <laughs> 2004. And then what was 28 Days Later? 2002. So, they were, so this okay. came after all those, and I think that was the fucking problem. Well, no, well yeah. And, what about 28 uh, months later? 28 months later, I think, was after this. I, I thought that came out 28 days, months. 28, oh, yeah. 28 days, months. Months later. What? 28 weeks later. 20, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's so, what it was. Uh, yeah, oh, 2007. Yeah, so that, even the sequel to that came out before this, so I think that's that was the problem then, at least people, in my maybe, maybe people got burned out. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think that was it, or they at least expected that. So that's our review for it. Kevin, that's an awesome fucking choice, dude, and you're a cool man. Thank you so much for supporting us on the Patreon. Thank all of you guys for supporting us on the Patreon. You're sexual, and, and you guys continue to be sexual. Dark fucking days of YouTube, man. We will need you. <laughs> so, We're uh, getting bent over a fucking barrel and <laughs> fucked in the ass right now. <laughs> if you guys want to check out the tiers, there's smaller tiers in there as well. Links down below. You don't have to, though. We're just thankful that you guys are here and watching the channel and commenting and talking to us. We love fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some goddamn William opinion. Woo -wee. Woo! You back at Queen again, I'll blow your fucking ass right off at Buffalo's hide. Everything's fucking moving. Shit. We watched a movie. Uh -huh. mm. We watched a movie. We watched a movie.